Shut up and sit down. Welcome back to Bass and Baits. In this video, I'm going to go back into our best bass baits for winter video, and I'm going to pull out the wiggle wart, and we're going to go a little more in depth on it. Um, starting out, I mean, the wiggle wart's a crankbait. It's two inches long. It's going to run in between seven to twelve feet, depending on what size line you use on it. We'll get into that here in a minute, but there's two styles of wiggle, wiggle warts when you hear people talking about them. There's what's called the pre Rapala wiggle wart and then the new the new wiggle warts that you go if you go to Walmart this is the wiggle wart you're going to get uh, in the late 90s Storm was bought by Rapala and they changed it up a little bit when Storm made them they was a lot more irregular like you got a lot more bad running ones but the ones that ran good uh, really produced good bites and and I argued that theory a lot with, with one of my good buddies. He was paying the big money for these pre Rapala warts, and I was throwing the, the new warts. And after getting your butt whooped several times, I mean, I, I started to become a believer in it. Um, I do know, I mean, there's a definite different sound to the old ones. You know, the new ones are more of a high pitch. They're steel um, rattles inside them, where the old ones are lead. So I think that that dull thudding sound definitely helps these out and they just have more of a hunting action. The ones that actually do run true will, you know, that I think that lead, it gets sticky inside there. So when it hits against the side, it'll make that, make that crankbait dart off a little more and that's when you get your bites. But um, the new wiggle warts run about four, four and a half dollars at Tackle Warehouse. I'll put a link down in the description. And then these pre Rapala warts, they can get from $15 on up. Um, and the bad thing is, you're real bad you, when you're fishing this, you're going to want to be in the rock. So you're going to grind that bill off pretty quick. I mean, I can go through an old, you know, pre Rapala wiggle wart in just a day or two's fishing. So, but there is an advantage to them. I mean, there's no doubt about it. So the fish that, I mean, you can catch any fish on these. I've caught. Large mouth, small mouth, pike, walleye. I'm always going to be a crawdad imitator. I'm either going to go with the reds, and then I also stay with the browns, just crawdad. I think this is a phantom, a phantom brown. But I don't ever mimic shad with these. I always want to go with these in the crawdad style colors. Now the best time to fish these that I have found is in between. 55 degrees and 45 degrees not saying you can't catch them when the water's in the 60s or 70s or when it goes all the way down to 40 but the time that these baits shine is in that 45 to 50 degree weather be it when it's going into the winter or it's coming out in the spring and into the spring is when they really shine when it when that water starts coming back up a little bit it's going to just absolutely smash them now location wise when you're fishing these baits I almost always am going to be around some type of rock cover they just that's where they excel at and I'm looking for points um, any type of transition if there's if I got a bluff wall and at the end of that bluff wall you know it goes from just solid bluff it starts going into some chunk rock that's where I'm gonna look a uh, pea gravel to chunk rock any type of transition area and if I can't find that I mean I'm looking for rock banks that's where the crawdads want to be that's what I'm imitating and, and that's just where I want to keep the bait um, retrieving on this thing it dives super aggressive super fast so it's going to get down to depth you know really really quick now what I want to do is I'm going to make a cast with it I'm going to reel it down until pretty fast until I feel contact with the bottom once I do that then I'm just going to slow it up I'm going to reel it good and slow, and that thing's just going to hit the rock, deflect, hit the rock, deflect. I want to keep it down at the bottom because I'm imitating a crawfish. 
I mean, I have fished these things in two to three foot of water and just super slow. I mean, it's almost like you're just dragging a football jig, but I can cover a little more water with it, you know, a little faster. Now let's get into the equipment of it. I throw mine on a seven foot crankbait rod with a good parabolic bend. I want to have a, if, if not, um, you could go with a, a medium action to a medium heavy if it's got a good soft tip. The softer the tip, the better with these. Um, it just helps play in the fish. They have pretty small trebles on them. And I want to have that soft tip, but I really like a good crankbait rod, either a composition rod where it's a glass, uh, fi uh, fiberglass graphite rod or just a straight glass rod. It gives you that good parabolic bend and it just helps you fight that fish a lot better. It's a lot more forgiving when they go to make that run. It'll load that rod up good, but it don't hit them too quick and, and snap those treble hooks out of their mouth. Reel speeds is very important with these. I try to fish these on a really slow reel. 5.1 to 6.4 would be as fast as I'll go with it. The line size I use is in between 8 and 12 pound test line. If I'm fishing a super clear lake, I want that 8 pound test line. That way I can get this thing down to that 12 foot depth that it will run in. And because in a clear lake, I mean, those fish are normally setting out just a little bit farther. They can't see it. I always use fluorocarbon on it, which is something I, I don't like to do a ton with uh, crankbaits. But on, on these, I like the fluorocarbon because I want to get it down there as deep as I can. So I'll use that eight pound fluorocarbon in really clear water. Once I get a little stain in the water, you can go with a 10 and 12 pound test. They don't, you know, they're going to be a little bit shallower and you can get by with that line. Hey guys, I hope this video helped you out going over the storm wiggle wart. I tried my best to give you a description of the bait, you know, kind of a little bit of the history of it, the equipment I use, the line I throw it on, the colors I recommend, the best time to fish it, which is the most important thing. That 45 to 55 degree water is when you want to target this bait. It'll definitely catch them outside that window. But inside that window, this thing will absolutely load the boat. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them down in the comments. If you feel like this video helped you, leave me a like, share the video, subscribe to the channel. It helps us grow, helps us get it out to more people. So that's all we got for today, and uh, we'll see you next time.